If you're a cliched backpacker who also loves the pretentiousness of film photography, I'm here to suggest the greatest travel camera that ever existed. Minox as a brand is really cool. They were famous for making spy cameras, those little pump action jobbies that spies would use to take photos of documents. They would then take the tiny film and secrete them somewhere secret, presumably their rectum, and then smuggle it across borders. Whilst my camera doesn't quite fit in my rectum, it's the Minox 35 GT, at one point the smallest camera ever made. I used this camera once before when I visited Spa to watch the Grand Prix. The camera kind of crapped the bed on this occasion. I assumed it was down to the batteries I used. You see, the old batteries are uh, no longer available. I think they must have been made out of asbestos and plutonium. Now you have to use a combination of other size batteries, 3D printed enclosures, or different batteries stacked on top of each other, and they never quite match the original voltage. Problems aside, I love this camera. It feels amazing in the hand. So precise and well-made and ergonomic, yet tiny. We'd snagged a bit of a deal on a holiday, so I wanted to take a roll of colour film out with me and capture the sheer beauty of this town. It's called Parast, and it's in the Bay of Cotor in Montenegro. The town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is filled with beautiful summer palaces and churches and islands and landscapes. The great and good of Montenegro all built houses here so they could enjoy this view and summer here. I'm sure a town as old as Parast has some really dark secrets hidden away, like the box under your mum's bed. Another reason this is an elite level camera is it doesn't have autofocus. Instead, you have to use something called zone focusing. This is where you adjust the F number and tell the camera what sort of distance you're going to be shooting and it gives you a window in which your photo will be in focus. It helps you out with an exposure meter that sort of picks the shutter speed for you. This means you have to put a bit of work in to get a decent photo out of it. I'd really enjoyed shooting this roll of film and the whole town is totally amazing, so I felt like I had some good pictures. Filled with confidence, I started the process of developing the photos next to my cactus that looks like Bender from Futurama. Developing went reasonably well, but I did have a few hiccups along the way. Nothing that would ruin the film, but I worried that I'd marked or scratched a few pictures. I could blame my level of skill for this, but I like to believe that perhaps I'd upset the photography gods in a previous life, perhaps by scratching a Leica lens or taking a dump in the back of a Hasselblad. When I hung the film and took a closer look, I was devastated. Most of the photos on the colour reel hadn't turned out, and a random selection along the roll had. This means that the film fed through the camera, but only certain shutter activations worked and the ones that did work were definitely very underdeveloped. Luckily my awesome yet heavily dyslexic brain had told me to take another roll of film so I'd shot a second roll in black and white. I'm not sure why I thought this would be any different but it was ISO 400 so it would have a bit more latitude to capture photos even if the shutter wasn't working brilliantly. This time I walked off the main promenade and started taking photos of some slightly more interesting things. I was really proud of some of the photos and I felt like I had some real gems on this reel. I started the development process. Side note, developing black and white is much more complicated than developing colour. Weird, I know, it's not what you expect, but it takes more chemicals and different timings and blah blah blah. As you might have already spotted, the same things happened. We have more developed photos, but there's still long stretches of nothing on the camera. If I look closely, I think the shutter has opened on some of these photos, but there's really nothing there. I've got to look on the bright side of this one. I got a couple of photos off the black and white film that are decent, and the camera can function, so I think it's salvageable. The photos that did turn out were gloomy and underexposed but it kind of has an interesting air to it and I got this photo of a putty tat. This roll could have been completely blank and I do like this photo of a church. So next up I'm going to join a few niche photo groups on Facebook see if I can find out a bit more. I did find this comment that mentioned that dirt can stop the shutter from working regularly and it's to do with how you store the camera. So I think there's hope for this bad boy in future. If you enjoyed this video like and subscribe. I try and make a video once every couple of weeks but I've been a bit slow lately due to the holiday. More stuff coming soon. P.S. Uh, I'm totally addicted to these things that are made out of like ice cream corn with Nutella in the middle. Oh my god.